Good morning. Good to see you all this day. It's a wonderful day once again. Great day to go out and play a coin. So let's all rise as we're able. We'll begin worship this day. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God. For in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took the light. Through the waters of the flood, Noah delivered his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 374. <laughs> Spirit be with you all. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia.
So let us pray. Bountiful God, you gather your people into your realm, and you promise us food from your tree of life. Nourish us with your word, that empowered by your spirit, we may love one another and the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Acts 16. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, he immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is leading, is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the, top, the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you've judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. This is the first reading, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The psalm is Psalm number 67, and we will read it responsibly. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known on earth, your saving help among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the whole nations on earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth its increase. The God of our own God has blessed us. May God give us blessing and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. Our second reading is from Revelation 21. In the spirit, one of the angels carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood but only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore. But the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Here ends the reading, the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but it is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that. I have done and said to you, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs so that when it does occur, you may believe. The Gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, you have given us new life through your Son, Jesus. With love and patience, you lead us into a new way of living, throwing aside old perceptions of strength and might in favor of a world that is open and accessible to all. May our perceptions change that we live without fear of scarcity and trust that all that we might need your hand provides. May we continue to revel in the abundance that we have received sharing with those who are in need. May we reflect your light into the darkness of this world. In Jesus' name, amen. My dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus. Amen. You know, over the centuries, the millennium, eons, I guess, uh, humankind has uh, spent many hours designing and building structures on a large scale. The Tower of Babel, the Great Pyramids, the Colosseum, the Parthenon, those are just a uh, few in the list that goes on and on, it seems. Now here in the States, the tallest structure uh, was built, of the Empire State Building. But it wasn't long after that, uh, had, uh, its height was eclipsed by the Sears Tower in Chicago. And I believe those have all fallen by the wayside now, too. It seems to me that there has been a structure built in Dubai that outdoes them all. And I'm sure there are others in the process. These buildings, indeed, are all marvels of engineering. You know, and for us to see these things from the ground level is really quite inspiring. I mean, you know, you get a stiff neck looking up there, but, you know, oftentimes, if you were to obtain a view from a different level, from getting up higher up in the, in the building or even looking from the top of the building down, out, about, that's when you can see things even more spectacularly. You know, when they were planning out these buildings, um, it requires uh, many 
uh, perspectives uh, to reach a good plan. You know, we here in uh, Marquette County are witnesses to these differing opinions and, and how things go as residents try to get a handle on affordable living around here. Many things need to be considered. One would be, is that the best use for that particular piece of property that they have in mind? And then we have to determine what is affordable housing. Is it 50,000? 150,000? 325,000? Where does it really become affordable and for whom? You know, is affordable rent, say, let's uh, $450 a month? Or is affordable rent more like $1,100 a month? possibly 1,500. As you can see, there are many things, many, many things to consider. I mean, will the, will the builder of uh, such a property, will he get a fair return on his investment or her investment? As you know, these are complicated processes. Thus, the importance of good planning and a great vision you know, I was reading somewhere where planning was referred to as having two types. There is problem planning, and then there is potential planning. We deal with the problem planning when we uh, take a look at uh, things that have been messed up from the past, and we try to find a way to make it better here and now. But potential planning is where we want to be in the future. It's where we look ahead with great vision as to what could be a better place. You know, we've for years have uh, seen cities become this mecca for people. And it starts off with this great idea that, oh, yes, there'll be a good melting pot. There'll be all these cultures exchanging. Things will grow well, and it all works out. But things often go wrong. One of the problems with our modern cities, of course, is urban sprawl when they run out of room. Witnessed that a few times here in my life where the cities just keep busting out of their walls and they move out into the forest land and knock it all down and build new homes for people. And it goes on and on and on. Of course, then there's the environmental problems that come with our larger cities. Where does all that water go when it collects on concrete? It's quite the problem, actually. We see problems with... Uh, uh, sewer lines, as we saw in Flint here not too long ago, where by merely treating the water incorrectly, they caused a lot of lead poisoning because of what we had done in the past. And then probably the worst thing that we can see that happens is this huge gap between the rich and the poor. I was watching a, a fishing show, and the host was uh, filming this wonderful city in Panama. It might have even been Panama City. And showing the wonderful architecture that was in the place, and how beautiful and grand the city was. And we went on about that. And then he panned the camera over, and he says, oh, of course, like every other city, there are the slums. And then he went on, completely dismissing this great division between peoples in the same town. It's not an easy thing for us to sit here and watch this and witness it. But there's one thing I would like you to do today, and that would be to focus on one of the words that's uh, presented a few times in our lessons today, and that word would be keep. We see it in the Gospel of John. Those who love me will keep my word. Now, we probably thought over the years that what this means to us is that, okay, that means 
we got to obey every single thing that was said. That's what keep that word means. But I would suggest that we look at it in a different way today. That keep might mean for us to guard the word of Jesus the Christ. That we might preserve it in our hearts and minds. That we would not lose that word. That we would protect it at all costs. And that we would observe it and pay attention to it. And let it rest within our souls. Most importantly, I think a term that would cover all those things is that we need to hold it dear to Jesus' word. That we commit it deep inside ourselves. That we hold on to that as something to dearly treasure. You know, in our Revelation reading today, you know, by the way, folks, it's not a very scary book. You should read more of it. <laughs> I'm glad we've been doing that during uh, this uh, season of Easter. But we see right off the get-go the writer John being lifted to a higher place that he might gain a better perspective on what is happening. And he proclaims to us that he can see the new Jerusalem descending from above into our midst. He can see that the temple has been replaced, that God is at the center of the city, that God is the one that lights the way, that God shows us the path taken. You see, this, this new city will be a place that uh, has inclusion in it, no one will be turned aside. The gates are always left open, John tells us. And then we hear of this beacon of hope that lives at the center of it. The one we should hold dear in our hearts. This beacon of hope that we can all hang on to and trust that all will live the river flowing with the stream of life for all peoples, the tree that bears fruit 12 months out of the year, that all would be fed, that we no longer have to live in scarcity and worried about where something might come from next. We merely have to look to our neighbor or somewhere else if it's not in our possession. And that we could all then share it. That the kings would come to this new Jerusalem. And that every nation would walk by the light of God. That all would come to know this peace. I wish they would have included one more verse today from this reading from Revelation. That would be verse 7. So see, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the word of the prophecy of this book. Are we to hold dear of the writings of John then, is that what this is saying? Or are we to hold dear to the prophecy of this book? Jesus the Christ, the lamb who was slain, who comes to live among us, that walks with us daily, that we can then hold dear to forever. Amen.
with the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the only Son of God. Turn where we are not to follow God from God, God, light from God, true God from true God, begotten not man, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was a of to the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became true king. For our sake, he was crucified in the heart of Christ. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the heavens of the dead. And this kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Lord's Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who with the Father and the Son of the Lord worship and glorify, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, for our bishops, Elizabeth and Catherine, people in need and all of creation. God of new life, open your church to the unexpected ways your spirit is at work. Guide bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders in their visioning, partnership, and planning. Surround us with your peace. God, in your mercy, Prayer. Give a vision of increase and abundant harvest for farmers, laborers, and gardeners who are beginning their growing season. Join their efforts with the goodness of creation to feed all living things. God, in your mercy, prayer. shine your light of wisdom and peace among nations. When those in power seek to assert dominance over others, Confound their ways and make them yield to your humble authority. God, in your mercy, give safe haven to those who seek healing, liberation, or peace. Create places filled with hospitality where hurting people find your loving presence and wholesomeness. God, in your mercy, Uphold the work of ministries and organizations in our communities who assist people experiencing homelessness, citizens returning from prison, and all marginalized people. Accomplish your will through their efforts. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Most compassionate God, we ask that you would indeed uh, bring healing and wholeness to all of this creation. We ask you to especially be with all of our members and friends and family and those who we name aloud or in our hearts and minds at this time. Matthew. Dave. God, in your mercy. Assemble your people at rivers, streams, and fonts where we remember our baptism and welcome others into the communion of saints. Gather us with those who have died when we meet together at your river of life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. May the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share that peace somehow. Peace to you.
to this Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body, that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. God most holy, O God most merciful, O God our rock and salvation. Hear us as we praise, call us to your table, grant us your life. When the world was a formless void, you formed order and beauty. When Abraham and Sarah were barren, you sent them a child. When the Israelites were enslaved, you led them to freedom. Ruth faced starvation. David fought Goliath, and the psalmist cried out for healing, and full of compassion, you granted the people your life. 
You entered our sorrows and Jesus, our brother. He was born among the poor. He lived under oppression. He wept over the city with infinite love. He granted the people your life. In the night in which he's betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his death, we cry out, Amen. Amen. Celebrating his resurrection, we shout, Amen. Amen. Trusting his presence in every time and place, we plead, Amen. Amen. O oh God, you are breath. Send your spirit on this meal. O oh God, you are bread. Feed us with yourself. O oh God, you are wine. Warm our hearts and make us one. O oh God, you are fire. Transform us with hope. O God most majestic, O God most motherly, O God our strength and song. You show us a vision of a tree of life with fruit for all and leaves that heal the nations. Grant us such life, the life of the Father to the Son, the life of the Spirit of our risen Savior, life in you, now and forever. Amen. So gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy mercy and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who come to his table.
body across to the view. The body across to the view. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption bless you now and forever.
So I kind of did an audible call while we were there in the middle of the service today. You know, we had in there a little insert, this uh, clergy debt relief, answer the call uh, thing. And um, on that, you know, you're able to uh, put in name, address, congregation, all that stuff, and you can mail it in to the synod. Or if you're comfortable right now, we can bring the basket out and we can do a collection and, and uh, take care of it that way. We can send in the check from, the, from church here, but uh, I don't know. Do I, see a, do I see a show of hands that everybody's prepared? I don't see anybody prepared. So there you go. Take it home with you. Fill it out. Mail it in. <laughs> um, you know, they shared a story at Synod Assembly. Um, uh, I, uh, I can't recall their names now. Husband and wife pastors down in our southern area there. Uh, new calls. Thought they were doing pretty good. Decided they needed to refinance their college loans, their seminary loans, and then told us all it was going to take them 30 years after they've refinanced this thing to pay it off. That's pretty much the entire length of their ministry. There are some among us that have gone 40 years, but, you know, I'm not naming names here today. But <laughs> that's a long time to pay off debt, friends, so... This is something that the Synod has put together where we can indeed help them out and help them get away from that strangling debt that they have. Um, got to look now to see what else we got going on. Huh? I just like saying that again. Plants, pies, summer buys. <laughs> it just kind of rolls off the tongue, you know. But that's coming up. That's not far away. So remember that also. Other than that, I think everything is as printed in the uh, bulletin. Um, I'd like the little thank you in there about the assembly. Close to 27,500 was collected from our churches for them. So to go to the center, that's awesome. And then I wasn't here. Richard got to steal the thunder for me, but I'm gonna make a bigger deal of it, I guess, again today. You know, Sarah Kimball here, sitting among our midst, all humble and shy and all that, until she goes out into the world, and then she's a real terror when she gets out there. You know, she was nominated by some great friends here at uh, uh, Emmanuel to uh, receive this award, that award that you saw last week, uh, the Breadbasket Award. And it's, you know, it, it wasn't just for her work with the paw packs that she helps spearhead, but it's the work that she does when we put together the baskets for Christmas and the baskets at Easter, Thanksgiving, I think we do one too, right? So, you know, just tons and tons of work going into the community here and reaching out and letting people know that we care and that we can help feed them. And I want to thank all of you because you support that ministry. So thanks to everyone. And Sarah. <laughs> I didn't turn you red enough. I've got to find some more things to say. <laughs> Are there any other announcements this day? Well, if not, go in peace. Share the good news. Thank you, God.